Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time today. We have a little bit of fireside smokiness, guys, the smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. This has been a interesting one. I've been working on this for almost a month. I'd say a good solid three weeks, probably four weeks at this point trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I've been getting a lot of email and a lot of DMs from people saying, listen, my Starlink is working really well. I'm not having problems with streaming anything like through my Roku or whatever, but for some reason, AT&T direct TV streaming no longer works. And that was as of about September, maybe the first week of September, somewhere around there. So it's been about a solid month. And I was reading through the forums and I've been getting all of these messages on, you know, how, how can I fix this? So, of course, you get the blame game where if you speak to AT&T, they're like, yeah, it's a Starlink problem. You know that Starlink has been having problems lately, right? And their service is a lot slower than it used to be, right? And we require eight megabit connection for every TV. So if you have multiple TVs, it's just simply not going to work. And you do know that Starlink has little outages because it is satellite based, right? It's just a whole bunch of BS is the bottom line. So I originally thought that AT&T was shadow banning, let's just call it, um, Starlink because they don't like them, right? It is a major competitor. And I do believe that SpaceX Starlink will one day be the largest ISP in the world, but that's for another video. Now, are they shadow banning? They could be. Um, there's an underlying reason behind why this is happening. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it. And before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They're free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you get anything from this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and possibly clicking this button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's now a thank you button down there. Thank you, YouTube, for giving that to me. There's a button down there. You can push that or even better, just become a member of the channel. And if you would be so kind, share this channel with your community. That would be awesome. So to get into this, I'm going to give you exactly how to fix it, but I want to tell you the underpinnings. So what I do on this channel, which I think is very important, is not only give you the how to fix something, but also the why. Because now, if you do not have Starlink and you have another service that is using CGNAT, which I'm going to get into in just a second, you'll be able to fix it with this remedy that I've come up with. Let me just give you a little bit of a backstory because this is important. Back in the 80s, it was thought that IPv4, which is what we're currently using, those IP addresses like 192.168.1.1 or whatever, those are IP addresses and they are version 4 IP addresses. Now, there was roughly, back in the 80s when this was invented, roughly about 4 billion IP addresses possible. And at the time, everyone back then said, yeah, that should be well enough. Well, they didn't expect the exponential growth of the internet that happened into the 90s. And by the end of the 90s, they came up with what is called IPv6. So instead of only allowing four, four billion IP addresses, IPv6 now would allow for 340 trillion IP addresses. Yes, trillion. So you could imagine this would be amazing, but even though it is over the last 20 years, it's not being readily used. IPv4 is still the main IP addresses that are being provided instead of IPv6. Why? It costs money to retrofit things and to change things up. So what the heck is this CGNAT? the cause of this whole entire problem anyways. CGNAT or Carrier Grade Network Address Translation is used by many ISPs and Starlink is one of them. They are using that limited pool of IP addresses, which we see in IPv4, instead of moving, spending the money, into IPv6. Now, without going into too much detail, I don't want to dig too deep here, but instead of each customer having their own 
IP address, right? Their own static IP address or even their own roaming IP address by pulling that IP address out of a massive pool of available IPs, they don't have that many available, right? So instead of each person getting their own, they use CGNAT and now one person can have the exact same IP address as the next person. So they can use one IP address for a hundred customers. They could use one IP address for a thousand customers. See where we're going with this? And this is why there is a problem. So how exactly does an ISP provide one IP address to a thousand people, for example? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's think of it this way. Let's use an apartment building as an analogy. Now the apartment building has an address. Let's say it's 100 East Main Street. And there's a family in the apartment building, let's say the Smith family. And they're at, once again, 100 East Main Street, but they're on the fifth floor in unit 12. Well, the postman that comes and delivers mail to that building, they don't really care what floor or what unit number they're delivering to. That's all they do is they look at that 100 East Main Street and they give all of the mail over to the mail room. Well, think of the mail room as CGNet or think of the mail room as that ISP that's using CGNet. So it takes all of that mail that comes in and now sorts it and sends it to the right floor and unit number. You get it? So even though everything is going to that one IP address, analogy, 100 East Main Street, that mail room is now sending it to where it goes. So there's a lot of backend power that needs to be there to be able to do that processing so that it knows where to send everything. It's the same way as your router works. When traffic goes out, that's fine. It goes into the web, the interwebs. It goes out to the internet. When it comes back, the router needs to know where to send it to. You might have 50 machines or 50 different devices at your home, but who sent out the request? That's exactly what the router does. It acts as the mail room. It brings in all of that data into that one IP address, that internet IP address, and then routes it to the sub address, like the 192.168.1.50, 1 1.51. My phone might be 1.52, the computer might be 1.53, whatever. So it acts as that mailroom. And that's the exact same thing that CGNAT does and the same thing that these ISPs do. So the reason behind this shadow banning, let's call it, where it might not be intentional, but it is happening, is because the IP address that is being shown to AT&T's DirecTV streaming network from Starlink at my location, for example, is not where I am. And people are like, why is that? Well, it's because they're using a pop or a point of presence. Now I'm located in West Palm Beach. I have a pop down in Miami, which is kind of close, but instead Starlink is using a pop for me out of Atlanta, Georgia. Why? I don't even wanna get into this. I did a whole video about it, it's annoying, but they are. So what happens is, is if I'm watching TV, I will get news and I will get ads and whatnot from where? Not down here in South Florida. I will get ads and news and all kinds of stuff from Atlanta, Georgia. So AT&T's direct TV streaming network is seeing me as someone being in Atlanta, Georgia, according to my IP address. Whereas they know my physical address is here in West Palm Beach. They're like, uh-uh, no, no right? You're not going to do none of that shady stuff with us and they just block it. So my solution here is instead of using a VPN is what I do. I use pure VPN. Instead of using a VPN to cloak or to change your IP address to a location farther away from you, right? To be able to get other content, let's say, which is a very powerful thing when it comes to using a VPN. I'm going to use the VPN to provide a server near me. So when I go into my VPN, instead of saying, I wanna be located in Germany, or I wanna be located in California, I say, I wanna be located in West Palm Beach, or Miami, or Boca Raton, or something close to me. And now AT&T says, oh yeah, he's right about where he should be within 
a couple of towns, and that's possible. You will have IP addresses that fluctuate a little bit in that centralized area. So we're okay with it. But if I come to you with an IP address that's in Atlanta, Georgia, they're like, nope, sorry. So this is what I'll end up using Pure VPN for, to be able to provide an IP address that's even closer to my location. Now, Pure VPN is pretty cool because not only I can do this, but I can also now use security cameras and anything else anywhere because I can get a static IP address, which Starlink doesn't provide me. And I can also do port forwarding that Starlink doesn't provide just by simply having this VPN and it's really cheap. So that's just one of the things. I can also do peer-to-peer -peer or P2P file transfers. I can do gaming through the Xbox, whereas some Xbox games won't work if you are at a different location and or if you do not have a static IP address. So that is another benefit. Also, I can set up a Plex server for myself and let's say family members on the other coast or maybe in Texas or wherever they are. And they'll still be able to use it because I can have that single IP address. I can also get access to any kind of geo-restricted movies or TV or sporting events or news. I could use a server out of Germany or in Dubai or a server in Colombia or wherever so that I can get movies and TV and restricted, let's say, news and sporting events from those locations just by kind of faking where I'm located, using servers in that location. Besides, of course, getting military grade surfing privacy that you do with a VPN. So there's a lot of power when using a VPN. So once again, this is why I give you the why. Because if you're not using Starlink and you're using another ISP and that ISP is found to use CGNAT, what I'm telling you here will most likely help you. Check that out. I have the Pure VPN. Matter of fact, I have a link to Pure VPN and they gave me a discount that I can give out. This was like months and months ago when I originally got the service and I said, eh, this is the one I'm going to use because in another video you can watch, I tested out about five or six different VPNs and this one worked the best for me. So I reached out to them and said, listen, can I like give my subscribers and my viewers a discount? And they said, yes, this is what you have to do. So anyways, down below, I will put that link. Use that if you want, grab a different VPN somewhere else, whatever it is. But using a VPN will solve this problem, period. So anyways, guys, I hope you've gotten something out of this video. If you have, as I said before, please throw the video a thumbs up and share it with your community, your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever, your community where you hang out with. Let's grow this channel, all right? So once again, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Lastly, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.